if we think back of what really uh, drove the innovation here in Silicon Valley for the, next, for the last 40 years, which is as long as I've been here almost, um, it really starts with what's happening with the underlying semiconductor technology. And then more recently, you know, we had all this advent of open source software, open source tools, and networking, you know, the web, the cloud. But the, the ultimate uh, fountain of youth, if you want, uh, is in fact the, the chip technology. And it has been this relentless you know, improvement cycle that started with, you know, I guess as early as the 1960s when people realized you can put more than one transistor on a chip. And um, uh, the, the original prediction of Dr. Moore, I'm not sure you list this, was actually back in 1965 where he was even a little bit more optimistic and predicted that the number of transistors per chip would double every year. Uh, this was subsequently revised in about 1975, which became the, the thing that became known as Moore's Law, that the number of transistors would double every other year, which is still a very, very remarkable uh, prediction uh, in terms of how, how accurate it has been. So here is uh, the chart from Moore's Law dating back from 1971, the first Intel 4004 microprocessor until 2011, which was the uh, uh, Nehalem class sort of CPU. And you see on the dotted line uh, is Moore's Law and the, the actual dots next to the dotted line are the respective uh, chips either from Intel or other companies that essentially track this curve. So this has been one of the most accurate predictions that I've ever seen you know, over a 40 year time span of how quickly you know, things would um, evolve at this, this exponential rate. And, and obviously this has been nothing but stunning. So if you do a doubling every other year over 40 years, it's a factor of one million. So the latest Intel chip as of two years ago, you know, had a million times as many transistors than the first microprocessor in 1971. And the, the good news here is it doesn't stop here. Uh, there's the Industry Technology uh, Roadmap Consortium for Semiconductors that includes all the process people and the people that make the equipment and, and the system vendors that keeps extrapolating these curves you know, for the next uh, 10 years or so. And on the industry roadmap, um, the, the red line is more slow. You know, we are right on schedule or right on target. There's actually a few dots that are above uh, more slow, which have to do with uh, flash chips where they're putting more than one bit of information into a single transistor, so they don't really quite count. But the, the center of the curve really goes right through there. And at this point, I think it's, uh, it's safe to predict that over the next, uh, let's just say, 12 years, there's another factor of 100 in density improvement, number of transistors per chip uh, that will be available in the early 1920s. And this is how much, how far out the, the industry roadmap goes. Um, then there are, of course, the, you know, the people who think beyond this. And um, you know, it's, at some point, there will be a limit here. Um, it, it may be you know, in the 1930s, it may be 20 years from now, but uh, there is definitely a, a, a chance, let's just call it, to get another factor of 1,000 beyond where the industry has been, has been today over the next 20 uh, years or so. Now, uh, breaking this down to you know, the individual transistors, um, the logic processes tend to be a little different than memory processes. Um, and again, uh, you know, the, the, the red line here is more slow. You can see it's falling off a little bit lately on the upper right there, uh, but it's still making approximately the same rate of progress, at least for the next uh, you know, 10 years or so. Uh, memory density, that's where the, the flash people are coming in and putting more than one bit per transistor. So that actually looks like they're above the curve, but on a per transistor basis, they're really uh, on the same level. So the technology basically is gonna be there. And um, the, the amazing thing, of course, is what this means at the system level uh, in terms of all kinds of systems that can be built with this. And um, perhaps the most uh, visible category of this lately has been um, the smartphone. So uh, smartphones, as you all know, uh, have been the fastest growing revolutionary device ever invented. And since the introduction of the iPhone in 2007 have ramped to uh, what's gonna be like a billion units uh, next year. Now, this is impressive enough, but what you may not have realized is that under the hood of this, there have been remarkable improvements. So uh, looking at the, uh, the Apple uh, sort of chips and roadmaps here, basically for each generation of, of processor they had in one of these phones, there was roughly a doubling in, in performance. And, and I don't mean to single out Apple here, just the, the intermission was readily available you know, on the internet. So 
Um, basically, the current chips that are shipping in the latest iPhone 5, which is the A7 processor, which is a 6 row device, has basically the same horsepower as a desktop computer, you know, like eight years ago. And the same graphics and so on in a, in a device that, you know, you can put in your pocket and has a 10-hour active battery lifetime. Um, so the, the amazing thing is, while the volume of these things were ramping, the, what you got for the same price point or for the same you know, um, unit of consumption improved almost an order of magnitude just the last you know, five, six years based on Moore's law and the ability to put more and more cores and more memory and more functionality into these devices without increasing even the power consumption or, or affecting the device in a negative way. So as a result, the overall product became even more attractive than it was you know, when it was first launched. So this is an example on the uh, smartphone industry. Um, if we branch out to the you know, next year uh, roadmap in terms of uh, server chips and so on, uh, the basic improvement is basically um, a number of cores. So it's really hard to get the clock rate higher and, and also memory latency hasn't improved a lot lately, but one can stick more and more cores on the chip. And if you follow the, the Intel server roadmap, you know, it's going from eight cores to 12 cores to 16 cores to 32 cores and so on, and, and the ARM people are doing even more cores. So uh, the, the, the prediction right now is that over the next uh, 12 years, we will see a hundredfold increase in number of cores and thus throughput per CPU uh, in the next 12 years. Uh, the, the chart I'm showing is a, is a logarithmic scale. If you put this on a linear scale, it looks even more impressive. But we're basically talking a thousand core chips by you know, 2024. And of course, what this means is the cost of computing goes down inversely. So assuming these chips cost more or less the same amount of money, uh, one could argue that you know, 10 years from now, uh, whatever a, a data center costs today, for 1% of the investment, you could get the same performance. Or alternatively, for the same investment, you would get 100 times more performance. So these are very, very dramatic uh, changes uh, at the data center level and, and the cloud computing level and all the, uh, the businesses and the people who, who depend on that. Now, there are some challenges, uh, as always. For example, memory bandwidth is one. You know, the more cores you have, the more memory bandwidth you want. And, and getting from the current level, which is you know, DDR3 going to DDR4, not a fact of 100 or 1,000 is actually very, very difficult, if not impossible because the, the pin limit of the package is itself, which is not scaling with Moore's law. There's only so many pins you can get on a certain chip package. And also the electrical signaling speed hasn't gone up uh, at any rate comparable to Moore's law. Uh, but there are solutions in sight. Um, in fact, um, it's already commonplace in the, chap in the, in the flash world to, that people do stacking of uh, multiple die in a single package and as a result get much more density. The same can be applied to DRAM technologies and in theory you could stick these DRAM stacks right on the CPU package and end up with a, a multitude of the bandwidth that's available today through external and discrete packaging. In fact, some people have talked about multi-chip packaging as the next uh, breakthrough in, in chip processing. So even though it's not directly related to a single chip, uh, it does enable system designs where you know, the entire smartphone more or less becomes the single chip. Now, for practical reasons, some of them, these chips are spread out, but you can integrate more and more functions in different technologies on the same package and thus reduce the size and also power and cost of these devices. Uh, this is particularly visible, again, on the flash side. Uh, people already have uh, 64 going to 128 gigabyte devices, which are actually stacks of 8 to 16 chips in a single, single pa physical package. And in a couple of years, we're going to see terabyte flash chips, which again are multiple die inside, um, you know, that fit on your, fit your fingerprint essentially, that have as much capacity as a conventional two and a half inch disk today. So the, the density improvement at the memory uh, level is nothing short but amazing, and uh, you know it's not going to be uh, the limiting factor of getting more and more uh, memory capacity in, in portable devices. If anything, limiting factor is the sheer output of these flash uh, factories, which people are still uh, building more of, because um, in today, to, to replace what's hard disk today with flash chips is actually feasible if one, if one, less had, one, one had a lot more factories. So uh, to sum up you know, Moore's law of, of where we are, uh, it's basically alive and well. Uh, the doubling um, is uh, continuing, at least for the next 10 years, it's fairly predictable. And that would be roughly another factor of 100 or so. And then perhaps, you know, it, it gets harder to forecast, but uh, there's every economic motivation certainly to keep going in this. Um, now, there are some um, 
clouds on the horizon.